Bill Gates, the billionaire philanthropist, is under investigation for his massive land grab in Idaho. But what's behind the mysterious rubbery fruits and vegetables? Yeah, crazy. That are popping up in supermarkets. Welcome to the last dispensation. You, not other people from other planets, you are living in it. Okay, doctrine. Let's start with Doctrine and Covenant section 89, verse 4. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints quotes in this section, section 89, verse 4, in consequence of evils and designs which do and will exist in the hearts of conspiring men in the last days. I have warned you and forewarned you by giving unto you this word of wisdom by revelation. And then the quote goes on to say that the Lord foresaw the situation of today when motives for money would cause men to conspire. Welcome back to the program where we delve into the latest news and events that shape our world here today. The same world that was baptized through a global flood 6,000 years ago. Go check out that whole playlist by Rod Meldrum and myself. Today, we're going to explore a fascinating topic that has been making headlines lately. Bill Gates, the infamous Bill Gates, extensive land purchases across the United States. And brothers and sisters, the gospel's true. And sometimes I need to talk about these things. But remember, remember, sometimes the Lord uh, allows us to encounter troubling information so that we can learn to rely on him and the witness of the spirit rather than the arm of flesh. Let us move forward with courage, trusting in the Lord's plan. So what's behind this massive land grab and what does it mean for the future of our food supply? Let's dive in and find out. Bill Gates, the billionaire philanthropist and co-founder of Microsoft, has been quietly, very quietly buying up large tracts of land across the United States. A lot, I guess, in Utah and Idaho. Did you know that Bill Gates is the largest private owner of farmland in the U.S.? He owns 270,000 acres. What does a computer boy want with all that land? A lot of Latter-day Saints selling their lands, maybe. Not just there, though. His investment firm, Cascade Cascade Investment, has acquired over 269,000 acres of land in 18 states, making him one of the largest private landowners in the country. But what's driving this land grab and what are the implications for the people of Idaho and beyond? Well, an investigation into Bill Gates' land purchases has raised concerns about potential conflicts of interest and the environmental impact of his large-scale farming operations. Authorities are looking into whether his land holdings violate any state or federal laws and whether his land business interests align with the best interests of the people of Idaho. Um, is, are they really looking into it or is this just some kind of psyop saying, is this just something to appease uh, those who want it to be investigated? Well, environmentalists and i'm not talking about the people at the top necessarily but those in the middle who actually believe that there are concerns are concerned this could very much possibly hurt bill gates a little bit one of the primary concerns surrounding bill gates land grab is the environmental impact behind it idaho is known for its pristine natural beauty And there are a lot of environmentalists and not just environmentalists, but others that are worried that Bill Gates, large scale farming operations could harm the state's ecosystems. So what could this mean for the future of Idaho's natural resources? Another aspect of the investigation is the potential for conflicts of interest. 
Uh, Bill Gates, a major landowner, has significant influence over the local economy and politics. He's monopolized, he's consumed all of the land, which makes him basically the most powerful man in Idaho. Examining his business interests are vital and are aligned with the best interests of the people of Idaho. And if yes, there are hidden agendas at play. So what does this all mean? Is Bill Gates land grab in Idaho a legitimate business move? Does he have, I mean, he does have the right to do that, right? Uh, we are capitalists. We are venture capitalists. We are people that love uh, for people to prosper. But where does capitalism, where should capitalism answer to the people? And I think we haven't thought about this a lot uh, unless we go back to uh, the turn of the century during the robber baron days. Uh, but I don't believe that uh, FDR uh, ran on a legitimate, um, I believe that those were scare tactics because he wasn't going after uh, the real robber barons. He was going after uh, folks that were making the economy run but i'm talking about where capitalism ends as far as those during the gilded age the gilded age is basically the in, during the 19th century post civil war up until the turn of the 20th century and you had people uh industrialists whose business practices were often considered ruthless very unethical uh, Andrew Carnegie, uh, Van, the Vanderbilts, and the Rockefellers. So there is a time, I, I believe, like Tucker Carlson does, where Tucker Carlson butts heads with Hannity. Hannity says, no, capitalism's capitalism, and we should allow anything and everything. You know what? Capitalism, for one thing, is a lesser law under God. God uh, has a higher law, which I believe is the law of consecration. And that could be explained in many different terms. Some people have misused uh, the ideas and principles of consecrating all that we have to God. Uh, some say that we are living the law of consecration now, that the law of tithing was part and include was, is the law of consecration and that those who were consecrating everything that was a select few of people. But who knows? The law of consecration is a higher law than, than capitalism. Uh, but, so I would agree with Tucker. There has to be uh, where the rubber hits the road, where we go, whoa, 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 back off here for a second. And so when you have big robber barons, like I mentioned, then, then you got problems. Is there something sinister at play here? And how do we analyze it? How do we take a look at it? It is up to us. Inevitably, it's going to be up to us to get it. And it has been through history. Look at uh, Marie Antoinette, which who I believe during the French Revolution, right before the French Revolution. Yes, she was naive and her husband was too. But were they? Or were they used as uh, puppets? And Were they scapegoats? Were they... Uh, did the real elites blame them for everything? And da 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 da. And the same with the, the Russian uh, Revolution as well, uh, where the Romanovs were assassinated. And then here comes Vladimir Lenin from Europe, Britain, with lots of money. Okay, so <laughs> going on and on, where do we draw the line? So here's the other thing, too. So inevitably, we, we have to be the ones they answer to. How we do that is going to be up to a select few. And I am not trying to incite a war or riot, so don't get me wrong. I'm just teaching history for a second. And you will find that through history. The Jews had to do that with the Romans, and they, they lost, but that was their only way that they were going to get out of tyranny or repent and come unto Christ, which they didn't. But that is not all. There, there are other strange phenomenons. Phenomena. No. 
Phenomena, da 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 da. Phenomena, da 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 da. Andrea said, "Phenomena." Yes, I know, phenomenon. Fine, Andrea, you word Nazi, you. <laughs> Phenomena. 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 Okay, so she said phenomena, and I knew that. There's another strange phenomena that's been making headlines lately, and that's the mysterious case of fake fruits and vegetables. It's horrible. People all across the United States have been, and I'm going to show you. And you've probably seen this already on a few in a few programs, and I have too, and that's where I get it from. Uh, many different programs, uh, rubbery produce, that, and, and not just rubbery, but it tastes bad. What's behind this bizarre trend, <laughs> and how does that relate to Bill Gates? And land purchases. For some mysterious reason, in the past few months, there's been loads of videos popping up all over social media of people buying what looks like fake food. It all started just a couple of weeks ago in the United States when several people started noticing that there was something off about the watermelon that they were buying on the supermarkets. So I got this watermelon up and I like to rinse my watermelon before I cut it and it's like does anybody has problems with their watermelon like this? Oh my god. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It sounds like the is dying. There are dozens of videos where people buy watermelon from the supermarket and it looks strange. Sometimes it looks like plastic. Sometimes it makes these weird noises, and sometimes, or many, many times actually, it feels as if it's made out of rubber. So I cut watermelon for my kids, and they're all bringing it right back, saying they don't like the texture. And I've seen enough videos of people posting rubbery watermelon. I can't believe I got one. I got a rubbery watermelon. The texture is so weird. Like, you gotta bend it so far before it will break but it wasn't just rubbery there was something else about the watermelon that was bothering a lot of people okay y'all i threw this uh, watermelon out over a week ago uh, it smelled really good bought it for more cut it open and it was like plastic tasting it was absolutely horrible uh, i didn't really know what to do with it so i threw it outside this is a week later it looks like it looks like mud What's going on? It was pretty obvious that there was something off about the watermelon and a lot of people were noticing it. But here's the thing, it wasn't just the watermelons. People were also noticing the same thing happening with avocados, blueberries, bananas and the list goes on. We got it from the supermarket, but when she opens it, and she breaks it in half, it gets very tough and doesn't really break. And if when it pulls, it's like it's glue. It's very tight and doughy. It looks very, very fake and Play-Doh. In this next video, Ari Osborne explains how she bought blueberries in the supermarket. When she gave it to her kid, she noticed that one of them looked like it was made out of rubber. Check this out. It's left in her little bowl and I put it down the drain for the garbage disposal. Um, and I push the button, um, you know, it's doing its thing, but there's a clinking and it sounds like something's stuck. So I go in the drain and there's a blueberry that's not breaking apart. It's not, I pick it up and why is there a rubber blueberry in my toddler's snack? She cut it in half and it actually looks as if it's made out of silicone or something like that. Strange, isn't it? But it gets even stranger in this next video, a woman tests out the food in the supermarket using a magnet and this is what happens. Look at this shit. Put a magnet. Let's see what I got from here. It's 
the great chicken. Let's try for Look at that shit. After these videos were posted and became a viral sensation, it made a lot of people ask the same question. Are we possibly eating fake food? What's your take? Today we're going to talk about Bill Gates' appeal and if it's safe. I did a pretty thorough research on Google to see if it was safe, and as I was reading the pages, it, it looked really safe. Until... I took one additional look at the ingredients of this appeal, and one of the things that was listed is his 99.34% of this product is listed as other ingredients. Other ingredients? <laughs> it doesn't tell you what's in it. So right there is a big red flag. There's no transparency. There's a lot of problems with this product. You know, we don't know if they added carrageenan in there, which creates a lot of problems for people. And some of the other edible coatings that they use are things like beeswax, which I think is, is a lot better, but they also use like shellac. I mean, don't they use shellac in woodworking, staining, or sometimes they'll put that on your nails? Is that safe? So I learned a lot about these uh, coatings that they're apparently putting on our fruits and vegetables, especially if you bring these fruits or vegetables home and you want to clean them off, right? So if you have this appeal coating around it, how are you going to take the pesticides out if it's conventional. You might want to just buy fruits or vegetables that don't have this coating. And yes, uh, they might go bad a little bit quicker, but at least you can wash them off with something more natural. I think Bill Gates has done more damage to uh, the world's health than probably any other individual aided and abetted by Tony Fauci. Brothers and sisters, the earth and all things on it and in it are part of God's plan for the redemption of his children and should be used responsibly to sustain the human family, not to engorge yourself with the riches of the world. Anytime a man is using food to withholding food or morphing food or uh, cursing the good things of the earth, distorting its DNA, all that stuff then you are in danger of hellfire. It's even found in duties and blessings of the priesthood, an old priesthood manual where it states, a steward is a person who has been given responsibility for someone else or for something belonging to someone else. And Bill Gates, in a sense, is a steward. One company that's been linked to Bill Gates is Appeal Sciences, a California startup that's developed a, a protective coating to extend the shelf life of fruits and vegetables. But some social media users are sharing unfounded claims about the product's safety. Now, a rebuttal from the other side is that some social media users are sharing unfounded claims about the product's safety but who wants to eat crap like this i don't care if it's safe or not does that look like something you want to eat and get out of a garden are human being minds this is what i'm saying we're not stupid idiots bill gates and others and elites we're not goats we're sheep and we look at watermelon we look at fruits like this and bananas and stuff that does not appeal to the human being eye come here tell tell the folks tell the folks what's that ai term where something looks like it's not real come to the microphone because they won't hear you oh wait hang on uh what's it when you see something and you know it's fake and it's just weird and insidious i forgot the term what the oh you did <laughs> okay yeah. it's okay yeah it's not an everyday term let me look right here. look it up uh ai term it's uncanny valley of the mind ai due to rapid advancements in the areas of artificial intelligence and effective computing cognitive scientists have also suggested the possibility of an uncanny valley of mind. And we see that fruits and vegetables, just like we can sense when something is not sentient. It is, that's not edible, okay? So stop trying to convince us that something is edible when it is not. So for you to try to debunk 
those unfounded claims. What is unfounded about it? Meanwhile, Idaho farmers are facing a water uh, curtailment order that could dry up their land and push them out of business. How does this relate to Bill Gates' land purchases, and what does it mean for the future of Idaho's agricultural industry? Here are the relevant scripture and statements from LDS leaders and publications that support the thread about environmental stewardship and caring for the earth. Doctrine and Covenants 104, 13 through 14, for it is expedient that I, the Lord, should make every man accountable as a steward over earthly blessings, which I've made and prepared for my creatures. For I, the Lord, stretched out the heavens and built the earth. My very handiwork and all things therein are mine. Doctrine and Covenants 49, 19, behold, the beast of the field and the fowls of the air and that which cometh of the earth is ordained for the use of man for food and for raiment, and that he might have an abundance. Elder Stephen E. Snow, God expects every one of his sons and daughters to act as good stewards of the land he created. Do you wonder where all the Ukraine money is going? Well, it looks like we've started a threat to pull. Idaho is trying to shut off water to 500,000 acres of farmland. 781 miles. But there's been plenty of rain this spring, so that's not it. They say it's due to water reserves underground. That it's projected to deplete at a too fast of a rate to preserve water supply. They need to shut off the water to 500,000 acres of Idaho farmland. But? But? The Continuing Appropriations and Ukraine Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2023 proved $4.5 billion for direct financial support to the government of Ukraine. Or so they said. Jervoice Global Limited enters an agreement of $15 million for information on drilling at its Idaho cobalt mine, utilizing funds from the additional Ukraine Supplemental Appropriations Act. Why is money for direct financial support for the government of Ukraine being rerouted by the Department of Defense to a cobalt mine in Idaho? Cobalt used in batteries for your phones, computers, electric cars, there are countless valuable usages for cobalt. Any side effects of cobalt we should be aware of, considering we use it in everything? Cobalt exposure triggers impairments in cognitive and anxiety-like behaviors, brain oxidative stress, and inflammation. And do you know what's a necessary component of cobalt mining in mass? Guessed it? Water. Lots of water. On May 31st, 2024, Idaho Department of Water announced shutting off water to 500,000 acres of farmland. June 21st, 2024, Jervois Cobalt Mine can start drilling 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Idaho is shutting off water due to a shortage at the same time the cobalt mine is set to start operating 24-7. And it's Ukraine's funding bill, one of many, that gave $15 million to Jovois to restart operations after losing money. Couple of things to look further into. How many members of Congress have a financial interest in this cobalt mine? My initial research? A lot. Also, is it linked to the CHIPS Act, where they gave Micron a fistful of money to start manufacturing in... Idaho. And are they trying to destroy crops so they can take the land and mine more cobalt or is it purely to control the water supply? I was just in Idaho. Absolutely beautiful state filled with great people. And the government shows up with the government gun and forces their will. Again. Maybe it's just a coincidence and I'm just a conspiracy theorist. Perhaps. But one fact remains absolutely true. Money that we were told was going to Ukraine is not. There is no coincidence. All right. So I want to go back to 2022 uh, where this is all related and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So ABC News, Idaho cobalt mining that devastated local water revisited with greener new approach. The Salmon Chalice National Forest covers 4.3 million acres of rolling mountains covered in trees, rivers, and wildlife in the largest wilderness area in the United States. Underneath the surface lies the Idaho Cobalt Belt, one of the country's only large deposits of the critical mineral key to the lithium-ion batteries that power our phones, laptops, and increasingly our vehicles. 
Cobalt mining abandoned this mountain range decades ago after one mine caused devastating effects on the local environment and an entire town. A mountain range in Idaho is now seen as a key location in the country's move towards renewable energy sources. Matt Lingridge, the executive general manager for Jervois Mining Limited, a company that is undertaking the project, told ABC News that the endeavor is important for the country's goal to reduce the use of fossil fuels. He told ABC News, we're going to continue to see technology advances, especially in batteries and in better battery chemistry that I have no doubt. But even with all of those advances, we're still going to need sustainably supplied cobalt. Matt Green, a project manager for Trout Unlimited, told ABC News that the mining was done without much oversight or federal environmental laws and that the metals left exposed by the mine's open pit and underground tunnels left behind allowed toxic metals to flow into nearby rivers and streams. They completely turned the stream upside down as the big machine went in there turned the stream upside down and blocked the whole stream off to get those precious metals. He also told ABC News, and then, quote, and then what was left were just these big piles of rock that the water just randomly flowed through. It was very unnatural. No riparian, no trees. In the early 90s, the federal government shut down the Blackbird Mining Operation, after it discovered the local water and ground supply was polluted. In 92, Blackbird site became an EPA Superfund site and work has been done to restore the water and local grounds. Wood said environmentalists are still picking up the pieces left behind by Blackbird 30 years Later, we've had populations of salmon, local populations of salmon go extinct from the impacts from mining, Wood said. <clears throat> you know, I have no doubt they might, I'm, I, sh I might even have subscribers that know a lot more about this than I am picking up. And according to my research, and I've done some extensive research on YouTube, of course, and I'm sure you guys could tell me a lot more. Wood reiterated that it's going to take decades to clean up the waters and the rest of the ecosystem from the previous cobalt mining, but she had optimism that the latest project could go on without setting their restoration efforts back. And while the ecological devastation from the old mine is still fresh, a changing economy and an increased calls to decrease fossil fuels has pushed companies and the federal government to restart mining. Lingridge boasted his company's new technology and mining processes, contending that those 21st century advances, along with new government regulations, will minimize the impact on the surrounding area. Fauna and flora compared to previous mining operations. At the end is, all of this gets filled. We cap the portal. We put the slope back and revegetate it. And nobody will ever know we were here, he said. So the, the company aims to produce 2,000 tons, 2,000 tons of cobalt a year, which represents 10% of the U.S. demand for the new batteries. Cobalt is deemed critical by the U.S. government because of its use in batteries. President Joe Joe Biden has been pushing to mine or it domestically instead of importing it from other nations. This is not good stewardship. Marcus B. Nash, the earth and all things on it should be used responsibly to sustain the human family. The earth and all things on it are prepared if God's plan for the redemption of his children and should be used responsibly to sustain the human family. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches that God created the earth to provide a place for the human family to learn, 
to grow, to be happy, to progress, to improve. The earth did not come by chance, nor by accident. It is a result of intelligent design, brothers and sisters, of a loving, we are here because, not because of the Big Bang or uh, natural selection. We are here as a result of a love of loving heavenly parents and a Godhead who created everything that has organized everything. These are worlds without end that we're here don't have a beginning. This plan of salvation was created uh, and continues to go on that is based on purpose, on agency, and on uh, choice, divine choice. These sources, brothers and sisters, and these scriptures emphasize the importance of environmental stewardship and the responsibility to care for the earth as a creation of God. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding the bell for notifications. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you'd like to contribute to the program, I do prefer Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, and we'll try out Zelle. I don't know much about Zelle. I'm still trying to figure it out. But I do prefer, uh, I would say Venmo out of the majority. So if you've got Venmo, do it that way. But Cash App, PayPal, and Zelle. There are also products sold that I get a percentage of, supers. If there's anything else you want, you think I should sell, go for it. Give me some ideas because I'm, I'm designing uh, merch. You guys want hats? The last dispensation? You're, you're living in the last dispensation? I don't know. Give me some ideas. And YouTube memberships that all help the program. Until next time, stay informed, stay vigilant, and I'll see you in the next time.